Right, you need to be smiling at the camera, mate, because we're now on YouTube and we have a visitor. I looked at the stats and Claire Hillman, um, who has sent us a pickle, said that she would be watching okay. uh, the YouTube channel. So, hi, Claire. How are you? Hope you're well. Um, so, there you go. We've got a visitor to our YouTube channel. Pretty Very good. Very nice. <laughs> So Claire sent us a, a pickle, uh, and for those of you, I know we've had a number of new um, new visitors, we've um, new listeners. We've um, uh, the stats have gone mad over the last few uh, few months. We've we've uh, the numbers of people that are, I don't know if I told you this. So we do a I do a um, newsletter, mm -hmm. uh, effectively uh, on LinkedIn uh, called Why Customers Buy. Um, and we have 35,000 subscribers on LinkedIn. So it's not a newsletter that's produced by us. It's produced by LinkedIn. Um, and we have 35,000 subscribers. And believe it or not, it's gone up to 69,000 subscribers in the last two months. So Crazy. I, I don't know what we're doing, if I'm totally <laughs> honest with you. Uh, but whatever it is, we just got to carry on doing it. So if you want to subscribe to the newsletter as well, then please just go to my profile on LinkedIn or type in why customers buy and the other 69,000 people, um, uh, of which Claire was one of them. Uh, and right. um, Claire has a pickle for us. Uh, and a pickle is a business problem um, that, that she has and wanted our advice. Uh, and the pickle is... And it's a really interesting one, actually, which is, should I move to where my customers are or should I move my customers to where I want them to be? Yeah. So should I move, you know, my offering and stuff like that around for the customer and go to where they are? Or should I say, well, no, actually, I want to operate in this market over here and I'm going to move them from there to here. And is a really interesting isn't philosophical it? pickle um, it is it is yeah, and as i, I started it. to think about it i was thinking well from a customer centric perspective you should argue that you should go to where your customers are but it may be then i started to think of two things one is well maybe you can't afford that the organization can't mm -hmm. or maybe the customers don't know what the customers don't know. That's right. And actually moving them is actually going to be better for them overall. Yeah. What do, what do you that, think? Um, there's that famous Henry Ford quote about, uh, um, you know, if I'd asked customers what they wanted, they would have told me they wanted faster horses. Yes, um, correct. Yes. No, that's a, that's a very good point. So, I, yeah, sometimes... I, People don't know what they don't know. They don't know what they what they would prefer until they've actually seen it and done it. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. So it started to make me think, uh, Claire, of, well, where are those things happening? Um, because when I first read this, I thought to myself, well, I'm not sure. Maybe it's just the answer of, you know, you should go to where they are. But then I started thinking, self-service and, and we've done podcast on this we'll put a link in the show notes and we'll put a link into the show notes by the way for the youtube channel as well check it out and subscribe if you can um but the um self-service is is one of them isn't it i mm -hmm. i went down to my local public store the other day and and this was actually interesting um and they've obviously got these checkouts now that you can do self-service on yep. Uh, and I have to say, I find them. I love technology, as you're more than more than aware. Yeah, um, but I find them quite annoying. But I, I'm trying to sort of educate myself on them. And one of the things that I noticed was that they have somebody wandering around, effectively. You know, when you get a problem, going, "Hey, I've got a problem. Can yep. I solve it?" And it was interesting because I said to the the woman said to me, she said, uh, I said, I don't know how, I think it was a red cabbage or something like that. I've got this red cabbage on. And I, I don't know if I'm buying it by weight or am I just buying a red cabbage? Is it just one price? What, you know, what do I do? And she said, oh, you need to search. And she said, when I'm training people, this is how I, I yeah. 
tell them to look for things. And I thought, yeah, you're training me, aren't you, really? Mm -hmm. you're, and you're moving me from one place that you don't want me to queue up at the checkout anymore. You want me to use this for obvious reasons. And actually, you're investing in training me in doing that. And it was the word training that really struck me. It is interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So that would be an example of moving customers to where you want them to be. Um, yeah. You know, but before we dig into this too much, like I'll, I'll, I'll call back to one of our previous um, topics that we love covering, which is segmentation. Yeah. Um, take something like self uh, checkout. Uh, there are a lot of people who are very annoyed by this and they, they are very unpleased that they have to do this themselves. And this used to be a yep. service that's right out of the store. Um, there, there's a segment of the market though, uh, me, um, who appreciates it because it's a, a less disruptive transaction for me. Typically I'm listening to a podcast or an audio book when I'm shopping and uh, anytime I have to go through a, a checkout man by a clerk, then I need to pause what I'm doing and have a conversation. And they ask me yep. a bunch of questions that I never. And, and you having a conversation with somebody is a problem awful, in itself, isn't it? Awful for everyone. It's terrible <laughs> all the way across the board. No, they always ask like, have you, did you find everything that you needed today? Like, like I wouldn't be up here if I didn't already have everything I needed. No, and then you turn around and say, no, I didn't. Could you tell me where the tomato yeah. ketchup is, please? No, I'm better, just going to go that. back to the tomato ketchup. Go back and get it for me. Yeah, like, I don't <laughs> – who are these people who are saying, like, oh, no, I didn't find it? Anyway, yeah. I, I know they're just being polite. The clerks are, so I don't – Sure. But um, for me, it's it's often, unless I have, like, a massive order, it's often more convenient for me. Yeah. I prefer it. So – so again, we need to think about like the fact that different groups of customers are different and might have different preferences around these things. So for me, it's not necessarily moving me anywhere. I'd prefer to be here. For other groups of customers, it is moving them and you're having to yeah. retrain them and get them to do things differently. So Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah. enough on that. Back to the, the main question. No, I, I, you... I think that's a... Re uh, I know, uh, let's pause for a moment because I think that's a really important point because if you take that, you know, there are going to be a segment of the customers, and we're only just talking here about self-service, um, who never want to do that. Right? Yeah. And, yep. and, you know, at the end of the day, and here's another interesting point. Um, God, I'm coming up with so many interesting points today. Um, you know, if that group of customers that you want to, that, that don't want to move, account for 20% of your revenue, yeah. maybe it's not a good idea. That's right. Yeah. Uh, or, or maybe there's a hybrid approach that you need to take, which clearly is what they're they're doing doing at the moment. Um, but you, but you know, if I think of some other shifts that have been made, um, there's the whole area around subscriptions, and again, we did a we did a podcast on that a little while ago. There's the whole area of digital, and obviously getting people to buy, uh, you know, online now, which is clearly, you know. And, and this goes back to what we were saying earlier, which is at the end of the day, this may be better for the customer in the long term. They just don't recognize that yeah. it's good for them. So, yes, it's good for the organization to be digital. But guess what? It's good for the customer to have things delivered to their house and, um, you know, being able to find the answers to questions without having to go down to uh, a shop and, you know, return things or whatever it, it may be and mobile apps, et cetera. But I think your point of the segmentation becomes uh, becomes key as well, doesn't it? Yeah. So when we're, when we're making this consideration of whether to meet customers or move customers, I, I do think going back to what customers value is going to, to drive that decision. Yeah. Um, you know, like, like you said, the, the impulse reaction is to give customers what they want, which means that you never move the customer. You always meet them where they're at. Um, but I think that's kind of a shallow understanding of customer value. Yes, I agree. Um, people tend to prefer the status quo. They tend to prefer not to change in many instances. Like I want to continue to do things the way that I've, I've always done them. So that's one value that people have. But then there are, there are a whole set of other values here. And so your job, as you're trying to, to meet the needs of your customer, is can you look and see, all right, so the change itself might be a little bit painful, but once they get over that hurdle, 
there's a whole host of new benefits that they are going to discover after they experience this. So going digital, for example, like, um, you know, if, if I've you've been used to paying my bills by getting a bill in the mail and then putting it on a physical stack of bills, and then on a certain day of the month, I sit down and I write a bunch of checks and then pay my bills that way, then your offer to go digital, go paperless, is not going to appeal to me. It's going to disrupt the way that I've been doing it. And yet, yeah. if uh, if you if you can look past that to see, well, there's actually now a whole host of new benefits that you can get. It's like we can now integrate it with your online banking. So you can now just click a couple of buttons and it'll automatically send out the check without you writing it. It's easier for you to search and find what your bills were in past months, right? Um, but none of that may be obvious to the customer until they've already experienced it. Um, as opposed yeah. to like a, a change where it's like, oh, well, this is going to be much more convenient for me as a business. And so, you know, sorry, customers, this is what's happening. Um, like that's that's not going to go over well. Yeah, and I, I think part of the issue becomes, so totally agree with you about value. And, and you know that we do this research around, we call the emotional signature that looks at, well, which parts of your experience drive value, okay? And, and when I say value, again, uh, it's what the organization get, okay? Um, uh, uh, and therefore, the, the issue for me becomes, how do you explain to customers what that new experience will be so the issue becomes how do they know how can they appreciate what drives value does yeah. that make sense yeah so so let me give you a, a more practical example so you can understand what we're talking about before the iphone was produced people used to just have flip phones and stuff like that trying to explain to somebody that you're going to have an iPhone that's got GPS, that's connected to the internet, that's got this and that. You go, okay, but how how's that going to benefit me? You know, because it was such a change, yeah. wasn't it? And to your point, you've got to have an experience that turning around to somebody and saying, uh, "Hey, we can now, you know, if one organisation doesn't do deliveries, home deliveries." You know, uh, turning around and, and saying, well, we can start doing home deliveries. Well, every, because people know what home deliveries are, they go, okay, so you're just another one of these organizations that's doing home deliveries, and I know what to expect here. But if you're moving them to something that they, they've they never experienced before, right. the challenge becomes how do you articulate, how, how do you articulate that, isn't it? Yeah, and what's remarkable to me is how often firms – to kind of don't even bother to try. Um, they just like yeah. force this change on customers. And then eventually customers will get the experience and they'll kind of discover these benefits for themselves. Um, but it's it's pretty frequent that like the, they're not making great efforts to explain the benefits and get customers to come along. They kind of force them and then that causes a lot of tension and then eventually things smooth out. Whereas if they did what you're suggesting... And actually, like, got people excited about the change and explained it and articulated it well, then that might make the whole process a lot faster and easier. Yeah. And it, again, it's making me think of um, I've recently upgraded to OSI 16. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The new operating system from Apple. And, um, and again, this talks to the segmentation piece. Um, and when I upgraded to that, um, I, I, what I immediately do is I then, uh, go on to YouTube and I, and I watch some videos of, um, from different people that I subscribe to, um, and learn the, the new things. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lorraine, my wife hates upgrading her phone. Yeah, she absolutely hates it. And what I've learned is I need to upgrade my phone, work out how the new things work. Yep. Then think to myself, 
Right. So if I now need to upgrade the Lorraine, what are the advantages that Lorraine has got? And then with my phone, I show her all the things that she could do. You know, the, the, this time it's the, actually you could have the home screen, you could have pictures of the grandkids and they could, and those pictures could rotate as part of the, the home screen. Uh, or you could have a widget on your home screen. Uh, and that's a really good thing. So we need to upgrade your phone. <laughs> uh, so I'm actually doing this, like this whole pickle, which is I'm moving her from a one yeah. place to another. But it's um, but that's a sort of a classic, classic example. Yeah, and, and you're following one of the key principles of positioning, which is you, you can't throw the kitchen sink at people. So, sure. you know, you explain to them the benefits, but you should really focus on one or two things. Um, and, and emphasize that this is the advantage of moving because otherwise it just gets lost and, and people can't kind of cope with that information. So yeah, are you making the effort to, if you want to move people, are you making the effort of explaining why and explaining the advantages and really focusing on one or two key benefits that the yeah. change will provide to them? Let me give you another example because this is an interesting one as well. Um, and again, it's the iPhone and stuff. Do you use do you use focus? You know the I don't know if you know, but the iPhone has got different focuses now. Not not focus on a camera perspective, but where he, um, setting it to do not disturb or I'm at right. work or do do you use that at all? I'm familiar with the the service, but no, I don't use it. Okay, I prefer so, to be distracted all the time. <laughs> Constant distraction. <laughs> so you, you know I'm a geek when it comes to all this stuff. All right. So I've now got lots of different focuses. So mm -hmm. I, I actually have a podcast recording focus. Oh, wow. Which basically means when I press that, nothing comes, no calls come through, uh, notifications come through, blah, 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 oh, blah. See, I solved that by just not having any friends that would call me. It's, <laughs> it's a lot easier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a longer, longer term issue. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the point I'm trying to make is that, uh, I was I I was with some friends the other week and they were they used me as, as their technical support and they were saying um, oh should I upgrade I go yeah you should and this was the last time actually I think it, this came out in um, in the OSI uh, OS fifteen uh, the focus I said yeah you should use focuses focus it enables you to do this 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 and this mm -hmm. and they looked at me as as if I was a bloody idiot. Because what I was doing was telling them how I use it. Yeah. Okay. I so it's great because I have my I have a podcast recording, and they went, but we don't do podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I, I I do it for this. Yeah. Well, I don't. We don't measure our sleep, so I don't have to put my watch in sleep mode. And I'm going. I'm actually thinking to myself. Yeah. What I'm doing here is I'm not explaining it to my audience. Yeah, the advantage from their perspective, and they don't even really understood what focus was about. Let alone, you know, they're going, "Well, I've just got the switch on the side, and I can just turn that to effectively do not disturb." We've got some 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 of my friends. It's interesting because if when I send them a text, and I'm if I'm sending a, them a text from the UK, it's uh, and it's I don't know ten o'clock in the morning UK time. It's five o'clock in the morning US time, and they haven't even put their phones on do not disturb. So I now wake them up. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I've learned not to send them texts uh, until lunchtime. And then I'm thinking, I'm getting very frustrated because I think I want to send them a text, but I better not send them a text because they're going to, I'm just going to wake them up. But there you go. You anyway. need to start sending them those texts with instructions on how to turn their phone into do not disturb mode because then they would. Yeah. Care. Well, <clears throat> and it, 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 this is actually all related to this subject because I've done that, okay? And I've then said to them, and their answer is, I don't want to do that in case I get an important phone call, an urgent phone call. And I've gone, yeah, I totally agree, but you can set up your phone, even if it's in do not disturb, to accept calls in from certain contacts. Or you can set up your phone 
So if it rings three times, anybody that tries you three times, it will break the do not disturb and come through. The point I'm trying to make is this is, I'm not trying to turn this into an educational event for Apple, but the point I'm trying to make is again, is it, it went past them because it was, I just, oh, that just sounds so complicated that I'm just going to not, you know, I'm just going to not answer the phone and hope people don't don't phone me or, or I'm just going to turn it off. So, so that speaks to going, again, that segmentation piece of how right. do I move somebody to that area, doesn't it? So I, I don't know if you realized, but you just tied these two disparate strategies together. So you you were telling the story. Mate. I knew oh, that yeah, I was doing yeah. that. No, nobody's believing that. <laughs> um, but you you told the story about moving or trying to move your friends, right? Explaining all of these new features and benefits, but yeah. that you weren't doing it from their perspective. Um, and I, I think that that's where this maybe collapses this distinction back down into serving your customers. Yes. Um, you said that I was explaining it from my perspective and that wasn't resonating with them. Yes. It suggests that even if we want to move people, we still need to meet them where they're at in terms of their messaging, right? We need to yes. we need to explain to them about why we want them to move yes. from their perspective of solving the problems that they have now. Yes. So whether we want to um, you know, meet them where they're at or whether we want to move them, we still need to kind of meet them even then, like uh, either in terms of, of providing them with something in their current state or moving them by appealing to their current concerns. But um, we always end up meeting them in, in some way. Yeah. And again, you know what, this is a good example because I think what happens is I get so excited about all these little changes that they make. Yeah. Okay? It's like I'm a Apple representative and yep. I'm just going, Bleh. Look at all these changes, isn't it great? This, this the, you know, look at all these features, and they're going, yeah. But for my life, it's you know, it, you know, you're just a geek, Colin. Go away yeah. and you know, go away and get on with it, basically. Whereas um, when you uh, you know approach your wife and say, well, with this new update can have this widget that rotates through pictures of the grandkids, you are focusing on something that she cares about. This is a need that she has. This is yes. something that would benefit her. And the fact that it does 99 other things, irrelevant, right? Yeah. Um, we're, we're now moving her to a new behavior, which is updating her phone, by meeting her with something that she cares about. Yes. And it's, the, it's that balance, isn't it, between the two, which is the pain of change yep. is worth the, you know, the, the, the investment of the time and energy that it's going to take and and if it if the pain of change is too great, then I'm just in fact again that goes back to our friend my friends, doesn't it? Which is uh, I'm not going to do all of that. That just sounds too complicated. Why would I, you know, try to fathom myself through through all those things? Yep. So so you, you, before we came on the podcast, you talked about mindset as well. Do you think this is addressing? Yeah, that? Well, I mean, when you when you read the pickle to me. <coughs> Beg your pardon. When you read the pickle to me, it, it occurred. So I, I use this terminology of meeting versus matching when I talk about um, system one and system two or the intuitive and the rational systems, um, as we've mentioned before in the podcast. Yep. Uh, so you can you can think about, you know, sometimes your customers are in a very intuitive mode of, of thinking um, and they're focused on their emotions and, and kind of what feels right. And sometimes they're in a more rational mode of thinking. And if you are trying to persuade customers, then you have the choice of either meeting them in the mindset that they're in. So in other words, if you're talking to customers who have a more intuitive mindset, then you need to appeal to emotions. You need to make things super easy. If you're uh, appealing to customers with a, um, a more rational mindset, then you need to come at them with facts and figures and, and strong yeah. arguments. Um, yeah. So you can meet and them in the mindset and that they're in. Framing as well. Yeah, right, the way that you frame the information. Uh, yeah. You can meet them in the mindset that they're in, or you can move them to a different mindset. So if you have an offering that is very intuitively appealing, maybe you need people to be in a more intuitive mindset when they evaluate it, which means you might um, have more success if they're distracted, um, if they're in a rush, if it's kind of a last-minute purchase. 
if you have an offering that makes more sense kind of rationally, then maybe the opposite is true. You need to get yeah. them when they're fully rested, they can concentrate. Yeah, so, good point. Um, so that that was the distinction that um, was made there. And I found it interesting that it came up in this pickle as well. Uh, I think that it is more general than just mindsets. Like you can talk yeah. about matching and meeting customers across a bunch of dimensions, but it's also useful when when thinking about this system one, system two, or intuitive versus rational mindsets. Yeah, and I know we've harped on about this um, before when we've had podcasts on segmentation, but I just... It horrifies me sometimes when you see organization segmentation where they go, well, we've got large customers, medium-sized yes. customers, and small customers. Because you try to do this pickle, you move them yeah. from one place to another. You're totally ignoring all of that all of that stuff. I, uh, I think the, that's what drives change. Yeah, I, I think the customer journey is another angle of looking at this. So at yeah. different stages in the process, people will have – you know, more cognitive resources available to them or in other stages, they'll be more distracted. Sure. Or in certain stages, certain like desires or needs or concerns will be more salient to them. And sure. in other stages, different things yeah. will matter. So sure. even when we're talking about moving or matching, it's important to know a lot about your customer when trying to even figure out which of those is possible. Yeah, sure. Totally agree. Okay. So as we bring this to a close, what, what, a practical advice let's do our usual practical advice stuff um well i want to start by uh, applauding was it claire who was the yep claire the hillman pick a lee um if i can call the term yeah um i mean i want to uh, applaud claire for even asking the question like i don't think that a lot of organizations even consider um yep. this is a choice that you can make that you can match yep. your customers where they're at in terms of their needs or their mindsets or you can move them I think yep. a lot of companies just do what they do and then expect customers to kind of show up. Um, yep. But this is a choice. And I think that it's it's a good um, problem to consider. Um, yep. So are we going to match them or meet them? Ultimately, it comes down to understanding the needs of those customers. Um, yep. People are generally looking to solve a problem. And so you can either so solve that at a surface level and kind of meet them when they have identified the problem. Or you can look and see, like, are there deeper problems that they really need solved? And that might require that we move them to a new place so that they can solve problems they didn't even realize they, they had. Yeah, yeah. No, I totally agree with all, all of those. Let, let me give you, uh, let me add a few to those. And some of these are, I, are, um, are a bit more granular, if you like. Yeah. So... If I go back to the example that I used of Publix, they've invested in having someone standing there yep. who will train you on how to use the new system. So you've got to put some investment in um, for people to, to train you on how to do that. The other thing I would say is you've got to have some really good measurement at the beginning. So here's the measures of you know the current customers in the current places. This is what we're now going to measure, and whatever's that that's therefore important to you, um, you know you you should be making sure that you measure. Undoubtedly, the new experience that you put in place is not going to be perfect at the beginning. So if you're moving from customers from one place to another, um, then you've got to learn from that. So you got to test it out. You got to learn from it, and you got to be prepared to um, to to make those uh, to make those uh, changes uh, as well. And I I just reinforced that whole area about segmentation. You've really got to understand your customers from a behavioural standpoint, not just from a uh, you know a, a product standpoint. And you've got to recognise that some people will. Um, yeah, you know, early adopters will move towards that change much more, uh, and some will just be um, based upon their personality profiles. Will be, you know, either good or not so good at wanting to make those moves or technology or whatever it may be. So, um, we hope that's uh, been of use. Um, if we could ask you one thing to do for us, um, that would be to do a review of the podcast. That would really help us. Uh, so, if you could go on to whichever platform you're listening from and just do a a quick review that would um, really help us um, get the podcast out there and known even further. And if you want to just um, sign up for the 
um, newsletter on on LinkedIn. Uh, we're going. We'll put a link in the show notes, but it's uh, why customers called why customers buy, uh, and you just go onto LinkedIn and and uh, search for it. Okay, that's it. Uh, we look forward to chatting to you next week. Okay, cheers. Bye.